Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Steve Fields. I'm the communications coordinator for the Windsor Essex Catholic District School Board, and uh, we've got a great story here today that we wanted to share with our with our greater school board community uh, about a young author, an aspiring young author who um, is a little bit of a literary protege, and she's uh, she's uh, submitted a, a story that she wrote. Uh, for a, a contest, an annual contest that's held by the Ontario English Catholic Teachers Association. And uh, it's a difficult award to win, and she won first place in her category. So I'd like to introduce you to Riel Cruz. Can you say hello to everybody, Riel? And Riel is a grade six student at Christ the King Catholic Elementary School, and she's here with her mother, Emily. Hello, Emily. Hello. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? Great. And we also have a, a very proud teacher who's here with us today. Uh, Andrew DiPietro is Riel's grade six teacher at Christ the King. Hello, Andrew. Hello. How's it going, Stephen? How are you doing today? Hello, Emily. Everything's going great. Everything's going great. So I want to start with uh, I want to start with Riel. Um, can you tell me just a, a little bit about the story? We've I've not had a chance to read the story, but um, tell me a little bit about what you wrote. Okay, so the story is inspired by Halloween. That's like about the time that I wrote it, around that time. So um, it's about these high school seniors that were dared to go to an abandoned mansion. And then they end up playing a Ouija board. And then inside of that, um, they end up getting haunted by the ghost of the house, who is the original settler. Okay. So it, it is the setting then, is it, is it local or is it just some other sort of fictionary place? It's fiction. Okay. It, but is it set in a local, like, does it happen in Windsor or? Fake town in Kansas. That's totally right. fake town. Okay. Okay. So, um, so what inspired you to write this story? Where did the idea come from? It was mostly just a project but then it also came from inspiration from other movies i saw and it was kind of like an idea i had in my head but it was something that i didn't want to actually write for because i knew it was, it was going to be too short for something so then it was the perfect opportunity when it came up in class mm -hmm. so mr di pietro can you tell me just what what the assignment was that you gave to your students that, that prompted this piece sorry your mic's off andrew Sorry, Stephen, I didn't catch the first part there. If yeah, I so can you just tell us a little bit about the about the actual assignment that you gave to your to your students that, that prompted Riel to, to write this piece? So uh, around Halloween time, I usually like to assign a Halloween narrative for the students to write, to try to express their, their writing uh, capabilities in a, kind of a funner, uh, a more fun atmosphere where they get a chance to talk about things that maybe they've seen in movies uh, or get a chance to... Uh, read their stories to the class to try to have like kind of like a spooky little day uh, before Halloween. So uh, as soon as I assigned this to Riel, she, she you know, was off to the races and I could tell something good was going to come out of it. Uh, she submitted it like fairly quickly, you know, and uh, but I could tell it's something she put so much time into. After reading it, I was just completely blown away. Uh, I instantly had to share it with our principal our LSST, other teachers around the school too, and everyone was just so amazed by this uh, piece of writing. Like, it's honestly something that I uh, have never really seen before, like the style of writing and just how good it was. I'd, I'd gotten chills after reading the ending. Uh, hopefully you guys get a chance to read it. The ending is extra special. Uh, so when this opportunity for the OECTA writers, young writers came about, I just thought this would be the perfect piece to submit. And, uh, I, you know, I was so confident that she was going to do very well in this uh, contest. So when she came first place, I wasn't surprised. So first place in all Ontario, I was completely blown away. It just couldn't be more proud. It's it's a prestigious award, and it's it's, it's amazing that, uh, that that you that you won that. Um, well, maybe not so amazing considering the fact that uh, Mr. Di Pietro says that you're such an excellent writer. So so um, so let's uh, let's turn it over to Riel. Can you can you uh, can you read a little bit of the of, of the story and and maybe not give away the ending? Okay. Sure. <laughs> I have to go on to my talk. Okay. While she's uh, looking for that, Riel uh, just continues to, to do a lot more stories. She even writes on, a, on an internet platform and uh, discovers she has quite a few followers reading other narratives that she's written. So 
Uh, I think this she has a very bright future in this field. Uh, if she chooses to pursue writing professionally uh, since she's kind of already doing that. So that's. Well, that's very cool. After maybe after you give us a bit of a reading, well, we can g give a little bit of plug to your to your platform there. So why don't you take it away, Rial? Why don't you why don't you give us a, 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 a section of the work? Okay, we just have to go. Okay. They're all in gas we heard th throughout the dark room. I can't do this. Veronica stood up, feeling the eyes of her friends on their run to the front door that was only away from the living room. <laughs> The he turned the knob. It was like an invisible backward, making her land five meters away on the stairway. Quickly, she got up and ran towards the, the couch that her friends occupied. Did anyone bring their phone with them? She only got a shake of the head in response. Who goes to an abandoned house without a cell phone? Are you guys out of your minds? She, Veronica whispered about yelled in, in bewilderment. They had close to zero ways of getting themselves out of the situation they put themselves in. Just as she was about to speak again, Daniel's head shot up into the air. And that's one paragraph of it. It sounded kind of suspenseful. So that's at the point where they're just they just get into the house. Then um, this is when they're at in the house for a while, except they're just like going over some of this stuff. So this is at the point where things really get going, basically. I'm scary. So Mr. De Pietro says that you 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 may be an aspiring young writer, um, and obviously you, you've got it. You got a passion for it. You love it. What what are some of your favorite kinds of books to read, and who are some of your favorite authors? My favorite genre is basically romance and then drama because I think it's the most um, interesting. And my favorite authors would be Julie Pleck and Anna Todd. Anna Todd is the author of After, one of my favorite books and movies. And then Julie Pleck is the author of the Vampire Diaries series. So those are. Uh, okay, I've got a daughter who really enjoyed the Vampire Diaries series too. So, um, so, and Mr. DiPietro tells me about a, a, a platform that you that you write on. What is that? Um, it's an app called Wattpad, and then I kind of upload like stories on there. Just kind of see the book. It's called Toxic for You, and I have about a few others that I'm not. I kind of on one of them, but then I have like others where if I have an idea, I'll make a cover for it and then descriptions and I'll like wait until I'm ready to like write other stuff on that. So very good. Well we'll have to check that out. So uh Andrew, can you tell me just a little bit about I mean what what kind of student is uh is Riel? Well I couldn't be more proud of uh the type of student Riel is. Uh, even at such a young age, she just has this poise and maturity that you don't see too often in, in many students. Uh, just like a, a real love of, of, of doing her best. You know, it's clear that when she's given a task, she wants to excel in that task. And uh, oftentimes, like she has this dedication that you just don't see where she, it's like she's singularly focused on completing that task. Uh, even now during our um, our online learning platform. Uh, I may assign a task for the week at maybe uh, uh, 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night for the next day, something that they should accomplish the next day. And when I awake, I find it already completed. So it's like she, you could tell that she s saw the task and had to complete it right away and is done usually perfectly. So a lot of times you'll see a student rush through things just to get it done. Uh, that's not real. Uh, it has to be done just so, you know, and, uh, um, those are the type of students that are a dream to teach, and uh, I think she has a bright future. So that perfectionism is obviously an essential part of uh, part of the craft, then, isn't it? Yes, it's the inner control freak and OCD in me. <laughs> so I, I want to ask your your mom, Emily. So so when when did you find out about the fact that uh, that Riel had won this award? Uh, actually, Mr. DiPietro, they were on a Google Meet, and uh, my uh, Riel called me in, and I uh, came in, and then Mr. DiPietro was like, do you want to tell her, or do you want me to tell her? And then she said, <laughs> so he told me, and then, you know, I was just instantly, uh, you know, amazed, and uh, I started crying right away. She always makes me cry with all her accomplishments, 
and she never really likes to give herself, you know, the full, uh, the full clout <laughs> that she modest. should get. She's so modest with her work, like with even on her Wattpad that she's telling you about, she has eight books on there. And uh, she has 3,000 people reading and waiting for her. Uh, 3,000 point two. Oh, 3,200 people uh, 2, waiting for her uh, next chapters to come out. So. Oh, that's amazing. We'll have to put something up about that. So, so where does she get her writing talent from? I guess that's just all her. It's not for me. <laughs> not for me at all. Imagination, maybe. But the writing skills, is, it's all her. So, Riel, what are you thinking about for career aspirations? You know, your, your teacher said that he thinks that you might want to go in to, to be a professional writer of some kind. Do you see yourself being a novelist or a, or a journalist, perhaps? What do you think you want to do? I see myself being an author because I think, like, writing books is the most fun thing for me. It calms me down, like, more than meditation would. And it's, like, really, it's more fun than I think going outside is. And it's really weird. I thought it was weird when I found out because that's a really weird thing for a kid to like doing. So either an author, a journalist, or like, I see myself being a magazine editor or something. That seems really cool. Great stuff. So I've got something here that I just want to share with you. Um, so Don Garrant, who is the president of the elementary unit for the Windsor-Essex section of OECTA, uh, uh, was asked to be here today. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here. Um, but he just did, he wanted me to read something to you that, that, he, that he submitted here. He said, the winning submissions for this year's Young Authors Awards are a testament to the talent, creativity, and broad perspectives of the students in our Catholic schools. I'm always amazed by the range of topics the students choose to write about and the passion and imagination they display in their work. Catholic teachers strive to nurture our students' skills and values and we're thrilled to showcase these remarkable examples of their ideas and abilities. Now, I understand, uh, I mean, that's some pretty nice uh, complimentary stuff for, for you. So I understand that uh, there's going to be a publication of some sort where, where this story is going to appear. Could, do you know about that? Um, I don't know much about it. I've heard like it's going to happen, but I don't know the for sure whole story. Okay. Mr. DiPietro, any idea when we might be able to see that in print? Have they told you? Uh, in the initial um, email that they sent congratulating Riel, they had mentioned that they were going to publish her story uh, in the uh, in one of the monthly OECTA magazines that's distributed to all the schools. So, tech, so it's pretty cool. Uh, Riel, you said that you have over 3,200 readers. You can probably multiply. You could probably multiply that by two now because of all the people that will, uh, all the teachers that will see your 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 story once those uh, once those magazines get distributed to the staff room. So it's pretty cool. Awesome stuff. Well, I'll be looking forward to reading it myself. And after we're done here, I'll tell you what, Riel, if you can send us a link to the uh, to the, the the place that you're, the platform that you're talking about where you post your stories, we'll be we'll sure to to share that in the video that we're going to create for this for this piece. We'll post it for you. All right. Well, listen, this has been great. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. I think it's a great story and good luck to you, Riel, in the future. I hope to uh, be reading more of your stuff as as you get a little bit older. I'd love to, to take a look at your work. Congratulations, thank Riel. Having us. OK, thanks, everybody. Thank, thank you, Stephen. Congratulations, Riel. Congratulations. Take care, everybody.